In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can blow up a car, such as the example here. Just a couple of caveats to this. One, this is for working with static meshes. It's not a skeletal mesh. But saying that, this will actually work with any static meshes, so it doesn't have to be a car. It could be any model. So let's just jump straight into things now. So on CG Trader, there's this great car model that we can download for free, and it's provided by Sammy Art 3D. So after the download delay, we are then given various options. We can just pick the top one, which is the blend file. So once you've downloaded it, you can place that and extract it into whatever folder is best for you. So once the file is unzipped, we can just go into the folder and then we can double click on the Blender file. So when the file opens up, there's very little we need to do in regards to prepping this for Unreal Engine. I'm just going to go into random mode just to have a quick look at the materials, the textures. And as we can see, they're all there and looking great. So I'll just go back to solid mode. We don't need all the parts here, so we can just delete them. I'm going to delete the studio background static mesh and the light and the camera. But one of the things that's so great with this model is that it's already been split up into the many different parts. So for example, if I select this door, I can just move that around. The wheels are all separate. The body is separate. And this will work really great when we come to simulating our explosion because these different parts can then all be blown apart. So all we need to do now is export this out ready for Unreal Engine. When you open this model, all the parts have already been parented to an empty as we can see in the outliner. We'll actually keep it that way. And the reason is, is because when we import this into Unreal Engine, we can import it as an FBX scene. And that just basically means all these parts, for example, this door, they've all got their own individual origin point. And if we import it as an FBX scene, they will keep this origin point and they won't all default to the world center. So I'm just gonna press A. I'm just gonna make sure that the empty is the active object. So I'm just gonna Hold control, select it in the world outliner, so the writing goes yellow. Now I'm going to go to file, export, export FBX. I'm going to export it back into the same folder where I kept the blender file. I'm just going to select selected objects, mesh. Where it says path mode, I'm going to change that to copy. And I'm going to select the icon that's like a little um, file icon. And what that does is it just packs the textures into the file. I will change the name, so I'm just going to shorten it a bit, and then I'm going to remove any spaces, so Mercedes-Benz 560, just with an underscore, should be fine. And then I'm going to export that FBX. So I've opened up Unreal Engine, and I'm inside a beach automotive scene. It's not a scene that I created. This can be downloaded for free from the Fab Marketplace, and I'll leave a link to this scene in the description. Although it doesn't matter at all what environment or what level you use, so inside of the content folder, I'm just going to right click, create a new folder and call this car explosion and then double click to open that up. Now I'm not going to drag the FBX directly in because there's a specific setting which isn't available unless you go through the import button. So if you just click on import and then just navigate to where you've saved your car. Now select the FBX model and in the file options, we're looking for something called FBX scene. So just select that. And now make sure it's selected still, and then just click on open. It will give us a few options. We can actually keep all of these as they are. As you can see, it's got like a root. And that root is the empty in Blender, but it's taken that empty and it's using it as the root. And all the other objects in the model are parented to this root. So now I'm going to click on import and it'll import all the objects in. It does bring us some warnings, but we don't have to worry about those. It has no effect on what we're going to do here. One important thing to know when you bring your FBX in as an FBX scene is that the static meshes can get scaled down so they're really tiny. If I just open up the chassis, you can see it's really small. The reason for this is it's the way Unreal Engine interprets the size or the scale. Blender works in meters, whereas Unreal Engine works in centimeters or the equivalent, the real world equivalent sizes. So it scales it down. Now you can scale up, these static meshes of course saying that by default it'll actually scale up the pieces in the blueprint so you don't have to do anything if you're just working with the blueprint which we will be in this tutorial that's just something important to be aware of so when you import this model in it may automatically open the blueprint if it doesn't you can find it in the content folder 
just scroll down and you've got a blueprint called FBX scene, Mercedes, etc. So we can double, actually before we double click to open it up, let's just press F2 to rename it and call it BP underscore car. That'll take it to the top of the folder. We can double click to open it up. And now that the blueprint is open, we can click on the viewport tab. And as you can see, the car has been put together inside of the blueprint. And if I click on the individual objects, they've kept their origin points as well, which is great. So when this model is imported, Unreal Engine has to a degree recreated some of the materials, but what it can do automatically is quite limited. So for example, the glass is opaque. So of course this isn't a tutorial on, on materials, but these materials can be improved a lot so you'll get a much more realistic looking car. For this, I'm just going to swap out the glass materials. So if I select the windscreen, click on it, and then in the right hand side it's got glass. Click on the drop down, search for M underscore glass, and then select the glass material. Now this glass material is, start, is part of the starter content. If you don't have that installed, in your content browser, you can just click add and then add feature or content pack and then go to content and just add it there. So now I'm just going to replace the glass on all the other windows. Okay, that's brilliant. So I'm just going to compile and save. Before we move on to the scripting part though, let's just dock this blueprint next to the level tab at the top. And from the folder, let's drag and place a car into the level. Now, when you drag it in, you might find that you can drag around the root gizmo, but the car itself doesn't move. That's because the parts of the car aren't movable. So if we go back into the blueprint in the components panel, we can just select all of the static mesh parts. So shift left key. And then on the right hand side, you can see mobility set to static. So just set that to movable for all of them. Press compile. You can save it and back in the level we can now move around the blueprint and all the static mesh parts move as well so let's just position this into one of the parking spots i'm just going to turn off snapping to give me a little bit more precision so there's an array of different ways in which we can trigger this explosion but for this tutorial we'll keep it simple so back in the blueprint the default Execution nodes that are there, we can just select them and delete them. And what we'll do is we'll add a box collision. So we can click on the viewport tab, left hand side, click on the add button, just search for box. We'll use a box collision. And now we can just scale this up. So I'll just press R to go to scale. And just scale it up so it surrounds the car, but at the same time leaves some distance between the edges of the box and the car. So when we overlap with the sides, of this box that will trigger the explosion so we don't want to be too close but that looks fine so I just press compile I can go back into the level Ooh, press G so I reveal the editor icons and that looks pretty good I'll press G just to hide the editor icons and now back into the blueprint okay so now let's go to the event graph where it says box we can right click on that add event on component begin overlap add that now if we drag off of here we can search for set simulate physics. We just want the top one. It gives us the options of all the different static meshes, but the set simulate physics. So what you can do is you can drag off the individual elements and plug them in like so. And then where it says simulate, you can tick it and it will simulate physics. So these things can be blown apart basically. However, this is somewhat laborious especially for all the parts we've got and it's not the best way to do it if you've got one or two parts this is fine but we've got lots so let's just delete those just drag set simulate physics to the right and let's right click and search for get components get components by tag now we can enter a tag name we'll just call this parts that will do for this but we're just going to select now in our components panel all the static meshes you can deselect that box, so just control and left click. And then on the right hand side, search for tag. Click the plus button to add a tag. And just add the tag exactly as how we have added it into the node. So parts with a capital P. And now they've all been tagged. As we've got multiple items, we do need to check every one. So we're just going to add a loop. So just drag off of the return value and just do for each loop. Now, where we've got the array element that will not plug directly into target because set simulate physics is looking for a primitive component or specifically a primitive static mesh component. 
So we're actually going to have to cast. So drag off of array element and search for cast to static mesh component. And this is the built-in class for static for the static mesh component. And it's just going to find any static mesh components now. And it's going to set simulate physics for them. So let's drag off of as static mesh component and plug that into target. And we'll just drag off of the execution arrow and plug that into the set simulate physics socket. And then we've got loop body, drag off of that, plug that into the cast. And then on component begin overlap, drag off of that and plug that into execute. Before we move on to the next part, in the set simulate physics, no, we just need to make sure we tick that box to simulate physics. Press compile, save. Now back in our level, I'm going to use the third person. You could use the first or the third person character to trigger this explosion. If you haven't got the third person installed, you can just click on add, add feature or content pack, third person and add to the project. We'll just make sure in the world settings that game mode override has also got third person game mode. Now we can press play. And when we walk over to the car, it blows up. Now that's possibly a bit over the top, but if you want a really powerful explosion, that should be working fine. Let's just escape. Now, the reason that it's so powerful is that if I click on one of these objects, let's just click on the actual body of the car, the chassis. And if I go to physics, I can see that the mass is 0 0.05, so it's a really low weight. The reason that it set it to such a low weight is that when those parts came in, they were set very small. And that was just in regard to the scale that I touched upon earlier. As this scale is so small, the set simulate physics has a very powerful effect. Now, what you can do is you can literally just tick the box here and then you can start manually setting the weight for all these objects. But this, to save us going through every part, a quicker way is if we just drag off of the cast of static mesh, and then if we just search for set mass kg, set mass overriding kg, we can use this, and then make sure we plug in the target as well into this set mass overriding kg. And mass in kg can be set to one for this, that's fine. It will set all the parts to the same weight, but that will increase the weight and should decrease the effect of simulating physics. Let's press compile and save. Make sure our viewport is back from the car a bit. So we start outside of the collision box, press play. And there you go, that's better. So we need to set a fairly low value. We could go to like 0 0.8, something like that. And then press play. Yeah, that's looking even better. So you may have noticed that some of the parts, or maybe most of the parts, are just floating in the air after the explosion. This is because of their collision settings. So if I just press escape, go to perspective, or sorry, go to lit and play a collision, we can see that the, the it's just one big blocky collision. If I go back into the blueprint, back into the viewport, select body chassis, and then on the right hand side, where it says static mesh, static mesh, chassis, little magnifying glass. It zooms to where this static mesh chassis is. So I'm gonna double click to open it up. I'm just gonna drag that onto screen. Again, it's really tiny because of how it's been brought in from Blender, but it's fine. We can still work with it like this. If we now go to simple collision, the default collision has added this large collision mesh, which does not hug the shape of the car. Now we can build our own collision meshes to get a better shape for this. We'll keep it simple. I'm just going to remove after we have removed the collision. We can just go back to collision and just add a box. We can select that box and scale it down. If you just press R to go to the scale gizmo, we can't actually drag it for some reason, but we can scale it in the viewport. And that's actually about all we need to do. We don't actually need to drag it. If you do want to move it around in the details, you can go into collision, primitives, index, and then you've got rotation and the center is where you can move it around, but that looks fine. So let's save that. You can close that down, compile the blueprint if you need to again. Now, if we go back into the viewport, we can see that we've lost this blocky shape, but we have got these weird looking 
collision shapes for the other parts of the car. So you'd have to go through fixing all of the collision for this. It's fairly simple to do, so not a big problem, but you'd remove any chance of floating objects. Let's just now go back to Lit, press play, walk over to it. And as you can see, that car now is resting on the ground, which is great. And to finish this off, we'll just add some explosions and some fire. We go into Fab, so click on Fab in the content browser. You search for fire. There is a free Niagara content pack. You can go to price, click on free. The one that we're going to use is M5 VFX Volume 2. You can click on that and then just add to project. So once it's downloaded, it will install it into the content pack. And in Niagara, the ones we're going to use are Explosion. We've got Explosion 0001 and 03. Let's just go into the blueprint, the event graph. And so the explosion happens at the same time as the physics comes into play. You can just drag the on component begin overlap box a little bit, drag off, search for sequence. So we can drag off of then one, search for spawn Niagara. The one we want is spawn system. So Niagara spawn system at location. In select asset, just search for exp. And that's nfar exp00. We need to give it a location where it's going to spawn. So for that, we can just use the body chassis. So drag that into the graph. Drag off of that. Search for get weld location. And drag off of that and plug into location. Compile it and save it. Now this won't actually work in this level because of one of the settings in the post process volume. So in outliner, search for post, <clears throat> for post process. Now do a search for either ray or translucency. And in translucency, we've got ray tracing. We can just turn that off and that should be working fine. So let's press play, run over to the car. And there you go. And we've got an explosion, a fire explosion to go with that as well. And that pretty much covers it. I mean, if you want a bit more control over the direction your explosion is going in, what you can do is drag off of set simulate physics, search for impulse, add an impulse, and then on, let's just, let's just have a look at the blueprint and then maybe on the X, we can add quite a high value. So let's go for like a hundred thousand. And then this will just push it to one side, so compile. Oh, it needs a target. So let's drag off of the cast and plug that in as a target. Let's compile and save. And press play. And as you can see, it now pushes the explosion over to the side. So that gives you a bit more control over where your objects are going to travel. We will add some finishing touches now. At the moment, every time you enter this collision box, it's going to trigger this explosion. And we only want it to happen once. So what we can do is drag the on component begin overlap to the left a bit, drag off of the socket and search for do once. And as it says, it'll only do this action once. From the spawn emitter, we can drag off of that and search for spawn audio. We can just do for this spawn sound 2D. And in sound, we can do a search for explosion. And these explosions come with the starter content. So not the best, but it'll add a sound effect at least. Let's compile and save it. And now for the final time, press play. So that's great. That covers it. If you've got any questions or comments, please do leave them in the comment section.